I've just been up on the foredeck drilling the holes for our mast base and come to the conclusion that access is going to be a bit of an issue. I'll just show you what I mean. So we've just received our mast base from Roland at Tempo Spars in Sydney. Now I had a few options going with uh, the rigging and I felt it very important to go with someone reasonably local as we live here. We, we're not going to travel around the world and live wherever we live but to have access to the rigger and the manufacturer of my spa and boom and mast and the like and the rigging is really important to me and given that it's only two hours drive away i actually love that fact and he's going to come down here and actually rig it in situ down the road from where i live so that's even more important to me because that means i can get anything done locally i can get parts locally and so so important i did have the option of importing some from selden um, but I think, you know, this guy does a lot of the racing rigs around the town. He also does a lot of the recreational rigs, so that's going to suit me down to the ground. Uh, Roland at Tempo Spars in Sydney has come up with this as a mast base. Now, this is what was primarily fitted to the Seawind 1160. And I do actually quite like it because it means that everything is up and dry off the deck. I won't have any water pooling in the mast base. And that's sort of important to be able to see the water and the corrosion that's going to be evident in the bottom of this mast as well and this pin here holds the load it's a quite a substantial piece of aluminium uh, if you look at it here he's actually manufactured it with a big stainless pin in it and that'll actually carry the weight and the load of the mast and i've seen hundreds of boats with this particular setup and it's always been good it does actually facilitate good raking of the mast as well now i've drilled the holes uh, where this base is going to sit and I couldn't actually finish this area until I got the mast base and I knew exactly what I was going to be dealing with I also don't have any pad eyes or anything down here on the base yet and I'm likely to put a couple in before I install it but all of my turning blocks and sheaves are going to be here they're not going to be down on the floor in the weather or laying around on the on the deck itself they're going to be around about three feet high because they're going to go straight back and over to my helm station so we decided that a collar on the mast here like the one i'm going to show you here will actually direct the line straight across the top there and across to the helm station so i quite like it now the issue i've got and it's an issue that i knew that i was going to have is that we have a bulkhead right here and the mast base is right here so this bolt this bolt and this bolt i can easily access this one here i can't i'm going to need to put a hatch in the central bulkhead of the boat. Now, it's actually not the center, it's about 30 centimeters off center down in line with this cutout here. Um, I'm going to have to put a, a hatch, probably a 150 millimeter hatch, so I can get my hand in to do up the nut and the bolt and the base plate that's underneath here. So when I drill this hole here, I can't find it. So I need to go in there and cut some sort of an access hole in the main central bulkhead, just so that I can facilitate um, installation and removal of the, the mast base at any time we need to if we ever need to replace it, re-rig the boat or whatever. The other three I can get to, this one, this one and this one are all in the master cabin. So that's cool, that's sort of how I planned it. What I didn't plan however was this one here. That was one thing that I was always going to have issues with. So I'm inside cutting away the main dinette module access panels behind the cushions and I'm hoping that'll give me some access it probably won't give me access to this bolt but it'll certainly give me access to this one here so if I do that now at least I've done that part and I was always going to cut that out anyway so I can access air conditioning ducting and the like anyway behind there but this area here is actually right on the edge of where the main central bulkhead is fitted so one of the jobs I've been putting off is cutting out these cutouts behind the main lounge dinette now this one here is going to access uh, very close to the bulkhead but it will or should give me room to run an electrical conduit behind such as i've got here this one here i've got access in behind it i like being able to reach my hand down in behind these some of these places because i simply can't access them because under here there's an air conditioning system and i'm not going to get behind that once that thing's installed same deal over here when i cut this one out it's going to give me unbridled access into the inverter and the electrical compartment without actually going in through here
Well, that one in there didn't improve my access to the mask base. I didn't think it would because there's a bulkhead directly behind it. So not ideal. Um, it certainly did not improve anything. So in there, bulkhead's basically just big enough for a conduit for air conditioning. So sort of that's how I planned it, but I didn't plan to not have access to the mask bulbs. So I'll have to put a hatch inside that front bedroom up in the side of that bulkhead. That's going to be a little bit of work. But anyway, we'll get to that later. But while I'm here, I might as well cut this one. That's going to give me access into the inverter. Now, when I've got the jigsaw in here, the inverter is about a centimetre and a half behind this um, section here. So I'm going to be very, very careful cutting this one out. So I'm going to grind it out and then I'll just trim that, I think, with the multi-tool. Use the jigsaw on these other ones and I should be right. There's plenty of clearance there. bolt access and wiring is going to have to be accessible through this hatch that I'm cutting here. Now I'm going to use a 20 centimeter hatch so I've got plenty of room to get my arm in through it. Um, I tried hole sawing, I thought I'd hole saw and then jigsaw out but I think I've got just enough room to get the jigsaw in there. It's about 40 millimeters thick so it's a pretty substantial bit of a hole and I'm a bit worried that it's going to be a little bit too too hard to get that access in there so if I don't cut it I won't know so I've got to cut it and I can always put it in a bigger hatch if I have to but I'll cut that out and see how we go. <laughs> That, my friends up there, is a very ugly hole. Um, I didn't have quite enough room to get the jigsaw in, so I got a drill in and drilled about 100 holes, and then I got the reciprocating saw in there and drilled about and, and hacked out as much as I could. I lost a bit down in between the mast post and the bulkhead. However, I've been able to suck it out with the vacuum, so that's pretty lucky. <laughs> anyway, so this hatch uh, is going to facilitate access to my mask bolts and that's super super important there's four large 13 millimeter stainless bolts are going to hold this mask in place through solid glass and g10 and uh, and now i do have access lucky to say however i need to show you how close i came to being a complete catastrophe and drilling through to the other bulkhead into the other room it might be a bit hard to see but here is the diagonal bulkhead that intersects the mast post which is right there and the forward main compression bulkhead of the actual mast post now that whole thing is a big box section and if you remember way back when i was joining the deck and the hull how much work i put into making this thing complete now it is a 25 millimeter marine ply with eight layers of epoxy inside and out glued tabbed and bolted to the forward bulkhead and this little 45 degree. Now that's actually left me with a cavity here behind this wall. And it's around about probably five, six inches wide, five inches wide, and about three foot deep. I put that in sort of knowing that I was gonna need a place for wire conduits. And this is where this is all gonna pay off. All that work I put in three years ago is gonna pay off today because now, I don't know whether you can see it, but right there is my rear uh, mast bolt. And that means I can get a full washer and a plate or a large washer or something onto that 13 millimeter bolt that's going to be holding the mast base in place there. The other three I've got good access to, so I'm very, very happy. Now, the trade-off is I've now got to have this particularly crappy plastic hatch up in the corner here, but to be honest, it fits in with the rest of it. I've got white fans and white sort of accessories in the room here, so that I reckon doesn't look too bad. And what that means is when that's open, I can actually get into there. Now, before I put this um, hatch in place permanently, I'm going to seal that 
plywood with epoxy. I'm not going to just put the hatch in and hope for the best. That will be sealed because if any water gets in there, we do not want this central bulkhead. And that is probably one of the thickest bulkheads, though that is the thickest bulkhead in the entire boat. I do not want that getting any water in it. And that was a $500 piece of timber that runs the full length of the center room here and forms a dividing wall between the starboard and the port cabin. Um, and also the main forward compression bulkhead. So I'm now gonna line this up. I'll get it all screwed in, but I am gonna come back later and epoxy that in place. And, uh, and that is one of the things I am paranoid about any sort of moisture getting into this area here, because this is the main structure of the boat right here. All right, so here you make something look pretty ordinary, look pretty good, just with a simple cheap plastic hatch. So getting the woodwork done has been a bit of a challenge for me because uh, you know I'm so used to working with fiberglass and steel and the like, and now I'm moving on to the woodwork, and uh, there's so much in it: mitering, um, bench tops finishing and then getting the whole thing to come and look it looks like it actually belongs is is certainly a challenge and one of those challenges is doing all the edge trims a lot of it i can actually buy as dressed all round type 90 degree angle and edges and mitering this is a challenge when you've got un, uh, peculiar angles and things but you know you tend to work it out you just take your time get a protractor sliding bevel and uh and work that out but uh things like this routing the edges of this this was actually started off life as a 40 by 19 millimeter piece of tasmanian oak and then i'll put it through my router table and round the edges and also route a slot in it so that it fits neatly over the top of our foam core edges because remembering we don't have a wide cavity to be able to uh, sit this stuff on it's all sitting on quite narrow profile so you can see here i've actually routed a slot down the center of it here and also i've got to then round the outsides of it so that means routing the top with a semicircular route of it and then the bottom as well so there's a little bit in this and uh and i've basically set myself up down here so this is how this piece will start i'll route a uh, a 16 millimeter slot through the center so it'll sit neatly on top of that foam and then basically round off all the edges and this is for the top of our galley i do want this also to serve I also like this to serve as a handrail. So if you can grab hold of the top of it, use it as a handrail as you're going up and down that companionway, then why not? I'd rather not have sharp edges wherever I can. And obviously this is uh, a nicely rounded section with that, with that routed edge, but uh, getting it all routed has taken some time and making sure that I get all the miters neat as well has been, you know, a bit of fun. And uh, taking me back to my younger days where Dad and I used to build a house, build a house together and we'd get into it and usually abuse each other while we yell at each other, that's not the way you do it. And that's how we worked. We used to get quite angry and Ellen alluded me to it the other day. She said, God, you complain the whole time you're working. And I do, when I'm on my own, I tend to complain if I stuff things up. And I think we're all guilty of that. Anyone that works in a trade, if you stuff up, it costs money, it costs time and it's a lot of effort to get something wrong, but it's even more effort to get something right. Okay, down the stern port cabin, and I've been going pretty hard in here. I've just lathered up this electrical cupboard with plenty of epoxy um, because there's not quite enough space here to get it neatly on here. Now, I've already done this robe here. You'll see this big hole here, a bit of an end, a bit of a mistake, but it's going to be covered by the trim. And uh, I had to do a bit of work to get that to fit in, and in fact, there's a bit of a, un, a bit of a different level here, right down this area here, where you can see there's a, a bit of a gap there that uh, is in the foam, and uh, should have probably laminated that. But anyway, I'll put a piece of bead in there to solve that problem, and obviously the door jam is going to come right over that. So I'm working on this section here, and I've got the piece for this part, and this and down here into our wiring conduit area. So there's plenty of stuff going on here. One thing I found very important is to have an edge of masking tape just to control the spill out or the squeeze out along the top there so that it doesn't get on my laminate. I do however want to somehow bead this with 
potentially some um, no more gaps. What I've tried to do is wherever I've joined a piece is actually use the same piece. I'm maintaining the grain. Now, the nice thing about working with these pre-made um, plastic laminates is that pretty much they're all exactly the same. You don't get uh, timber sort of look where you've got different grains all over the place. Pretty instant result. It's like years of work going into the structure and you're just hiding it with a piece of plastic shit. But, you know, that is in the majority of people's houses and boats and, you know, I always do say it doesn't matter how well you build something, it's how you paint it or how you cover it up with um, finishes is more important. Um, but I don't believe that. I believe that the construction of this boat is as solid as a rock. It is definitely all hand laminated or I haven't had any infusion failures or any vacuum bagging failures in this boat it's all been hand laminated to the detail that probably um hopefully we'll save it one day in a big sea but who knows I'm not convinced I shouldn't have continued up in there I might have to roll that with Raptor but I am going to re-finish this with a rolled finish with the Raptor, although it is Raptor now I'm going to give it a light sand and just roll the Raptor on to uh, to get a nicer finish because it is still a little bit rough. Right, oh, I'm deep in door manufacture here. This is all the robes and all the foam core. So luckily when I cut the blanks out, I kept them. I didn't use them for something else, which could have easily happened. But the idea is we just glue the laminate on and then we can door match. And what, what I've also done is I've cut these out of the robes so they're perfectly book matched to the surrounding door. So hopefully we get the grains all in the orientation. It's, it's unlikely we'll get them perfect, but it will look you know pretty reasonable we've got all the grains running the same way and uh and the corresponding door will obviously match the corresponding surround uh with the same piece so pretty happy to do that i've got epoxy on this one i'm going to get this one stuck down the humble aussie 20 cent piece is the perfect spacer for the robe and cupboard door surrounds Using a reverse 19 by 19 millimeter 90 degree Tassie oak section, I began fashioning the reverse door surrounds. These will be epoxied to the foam robe doors and that'll involve edge preparation and the two bob piece will be positioned to ensure consistent spacing on each and every door. Very humble Aussie 20 cent piece. It's got a platypus on it.